the awareness becomes so collectively conscious that it becomes part and parcel of you. Who is the other? The feeling of otherness goes away. Now people talk big things like, we are all united, we are all brothers and sisters and this and this, you must have heard all these speeches and when it comes to wars they will fight. But in this you cannot fight, because who is the other? You can't fight your nose, you can't fight your hand, you can't fight your fingers, nor do you help anyone. You don't help anyone, because supposing this finger is in trouble and this hand presses it, does it help it? Nothing. This is neither obliged nor this is helping, this is one. That feeling of oneness that you are part and parcel of the whole is established. Because of that feeling, that is such a tremendous feeling that you are part and parcel of the whole, that you get cured. The curing comes because of that innate understanding by your being that you are not alone, you are part and parcel of the whole, you are a cell of the whole body of God or you are a microcosm of the macrocosm. <coughs> this is not just a psychological or a rational thing, but you just become, you just become, you can't help it. And when you are that, you just don't feel you are helping anyone, I mean, it's just like you see one cell acting for another cell. The whole thing works in such a homogeneous way, no fighting, no quarreling, on the contrary you enjoy each other, you just love each other and you just see the good points of another person, you don't see the bad points, you forget the race, you forget all creeds and everything you forget, because you see a nose doesn't say, I am higher than the hands, does it say? Or the feet do not say, I am lower than the hands, they all are required, supposing there is something wrong with the feet, you will just try to help. Something wrong with the nose, you will help your nose. You don't discriminate in your body, do you? In the same way, we do not discriminate. Once you become realized souls, whether you are from India or from Asia or from any other place, from England, America, any place you may be, maybe Chinese, every sort of faces we are in the cross section of Sahaja Yogi, you will find all kinds of people are there and they all love each other. You must see the way when these people from England went to India, to the villages where I work. The villagers, you see, just grabbed them and they were so happy, they said, first time we are meeting our brothers and sisters. And these people were just enjoying them and they all started dancing, of course, they are very light-footed, they wanted all these people to dance with them. I know the Britishers are not so light-footed as they are, so they found it rather difficult. So they made <laughs> them jump, jump, jump and now they have become good dancers too and they all dance together and sing together in complete joy and understanding. See, the whole attitude towards life changes. You become really a princess in the sense that you don't need anything, there is no dirt. If there is a dirt, then you are a beggar. If there is no dirt, you can sleep here, you can sleep in a palace, you can, uh, if you want, you can get a Rolls Royce or if you want, you can walk. What's the harm? What's the difference? Because the joy comes from your spirit, not from outside. Thing. The whole idea of comfort changes, the whole idea of luxury changes, it's all completely changed because you enter into this new dimension and that's what happens to your awareness, that you become collectively conscious. The enlightenment gives a human awareness a new dimension by which you are collectively conscious. Now emotion gives us happiness, you see, if you love somebody you feel happy and you meet that person you feel happy and uh, you want to bestow all your love on that person, if your children are there, you want to love them and give them love. But before realization, this joy <coughs> is limited. For example, husband-wife relation I can understand, but what children like in India, you see, they love their children so much that they will even sell their country for their children's sake. The love becomes like a possession, it becomes a love-hate relationship, you see. They love so much that they come to hate. <coughs> it's a funny thing, but it happens. Why? Because it has limitations. Love has limitations. It's not infinite, but when you get your love enlightened, you get joy. There's no material give and take, but you enjoy each other. In Calcutta first time, on my way to America I had gone, I was staying in a hotel. There were other surgeons, five, six surgeons staying with me in other rooms. And one gentleman came to see me and he fell at my feet and tremendous vibrations here and they all rushed. Who has come? Who has come? I said, why? Tremendous 
Joy started flowing overhead, overhead, mother. Who is at your feet? They all rushed to me. I said, see this one. Ha ah, ha, they all stood. Ha, ah, what enjoyment, what enjoyment. He was enjoying, they were enjoying him. This is the first time you enjoy human beings because you can feel the vibrations of a person. What a beauty human being is, what a glory he is, what a blessing he is, what a creation he is, you realize only after realization. Before that, you judge him, oh, he has got long hair, he has got red hair, he has got long nose, all this. But then you just see him in a subtle way. What he is, is his vibration. And so many people I've seen, Sir Yogi is also, if they get somebody, they'll all rush there. The fellow is there and they are all taking vibration. For half an hour I'm tired now. I said, now finish it off. But no, they're just sucking like a child. First time you enjoy human beings. The joy, which has not duality, joy does not have happiness and unhappiness. Happiness comes to us when our ego is pampered, and happy comes to us, comes to us when our ego is damped. It is something different. We are not our egos; we are ourselves. And when self enjoys something, it enjoys it. There is no remorse. There is no duality about. It. There's no unhappiness. So joy is a complete. It cannot be described. It is just to be experienced and enjoyed within ourselves. And that's what happens to us when we get our realization, our idea of love changes. Like we say, Oh, I love this person. Okay. Like your husband is there, all right? You have to love him like a husband. You don't love everybody like a husband, all right? Your sister is there, you love her like a sister. But you think all others as your sisters. Then you love your brothers, you <coughs> think them to be your brothers. You love all of them. The love spreads like that. It does not uh, rest in one place. It does not uh, uh, sort of stagnate. It does not coagulate. Supposing in a plant the sap is rising and it goes to one flower because it loves it and settles down there, the tree will die and the flower will die. So the love we have before realization is like that love, which dies ultimately or creates problems and it dies. But love after realization is a love that emits just flows. You don't get anything. What do you get? People ask me. Uh, I mean, my husband, you know, is in a different line, and I have a double life. And all my friends ask, "What do you get out of it?" I said, "I do. I'm not here to get. I get out something from it. It's just to give. It's to enjoy. 